HR issues can kill you. One complaint against your company can turn your world upside down. And you spend way too much time dealing with HR when you should be spending your time on making a profit. You should talk to Bambi. With Bambi, get access to your own dedicated U.S.-based HR manager starting at just $99 per month. They get to know you and your business while providing HR expertise and the personal touch you need and want. They're available by phone, email, and real-time chat, so onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. And with Bambi's HR Autopilot, you'll automate important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. HR managers can easily cost 80 grand a year, but Bambi starts at $99 per month. Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now and type in Accelerate under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. Spelled BAM, B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Accelerate. Hey guys, this is Gabby Douglas. If you have an active lifestyle like me, hydration is key. That's why I love the Hydration Watermelon Smoothie from Smoothie King. Blended with whole fruits, coconut water, and more electrolytes than some of the leading sports drinks, Hydration Watermelon is the cleaner way to hydrate with no artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives. So you can recover and perform at your peak ability during the summer heat. Order online or through the app for pickup or delivery. Smoothie King, rule the day. Welcome to Accelerate Your Business Growth with your host, Diane Helbig. Diane is a leading small business development and leadership coach, author, and speaker who is passionate about sharing valuable ideas, tips, and techniques with business professionals worldwide. Diane brings you the world's experts and gurus in all things business, whether it's sales, structure, social media, planning, or plateauing, guests bring their expertise and energy to each episode. When growing your business is your focus, Accelerate Your Business Growth is the show to listen to. Got a topic or guest suggestion? Let Diane know. The goal is to make sure you have the information you need to move your business forward. Thanks for joining us. Settle in and enjoy. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. Today's podcast is sponsored by Audible.com. As most of you probably already know, Audible.com is a leading provider of audiobooks, but they are so much more. They have podcasts, they have Audible Originals, guided meditations, it's sort of endless, uh, the kinds of things that you can listen to on Audible.com. So we're offering you a free trial so you can check it out for yourself. You can go to audibletrial.com slash business growth. And once you uh, sign up, you can explore around and, and see what's there that resonates with you. Over the years, the Accelerate Your Business Growth podcast has gained recognition as a great resource for small business owners, business leaders, sales professionals. Uh, and this is really because of the guests. Uh, these are folks who have expertise in uh, particular areas of business, and they join me to uh, have a conversation where they share that expertise with all of you. So you get information you need in a timely fashion and uh, ideas, answers, uh, things that you can then take back into your business and folks who you can see really know what they're talking about. So you can reach out to them for further conversations if you'd like. Today is no exception. My guest today is Nate Skelhaas. Nate is a vice president and actuary in the individual life division of Principal Financial Group. He's responsible for the product, strategy, and actuarial teams. He works in close partnership with the company's small mid-sized business clients. Nate has been with Principal for 23 years and has held multiple roles including including Life CFO. Nate graduated from Dort College, 
hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, with a bachelor's degree in mathematics. His designations include FSA and MAAA. Thanks so much for joining me today, Nate. You bet, Diane, and thank you for having me. It's, uh, it's gonna be fun to be here today. We're gonna have a great conversation. We're gonna be talking about all the stuff that, um, the financial stuff that is going on with the uh, COVID uh, pandemic. And at the time that we are recording this, many states are starting to open up and small businesses are going through the gymnastics of trying to figure out how they reemerge from all of this. So um, I I'm gonna ask you to start with uh, sharing your perspective on the federal stimulus that, that you know, we now have that's supposed to be supporting small business and what's your take? Yeah, I, I think it's clear that it was needed. I think when many of these businesses shut their doors or had to slow production or had to slow down, they were hurt pretty substantially and the government did have to step in and do something to help them. I think what's unclear yet is have they done enough? When you look at the different programs that are out there, and if you just take the, the Paytech Protection Program, how quickly that first round um, what was used up and how quickly yeah. it got, I think it went way faster than they thought. And so they authorized another big chunk and that's being used up quickly. And, and what we don't know yet is if that's enough. And, and you know that they're, they're talking in Washington right now about a third round and what might that look like. So I think it's clear something needed to be done. I think it's clear that what they did was a step in the right direction. But what I don't think is clear yet is, is it enough? Are they done? And have they hit all the right spots? Yeah, it's so interesting. I, I um, feel the same way. I, I think, thank goodness that they acted relatively quickly and they, and they went ahead and did um, something. I'm curious though, what you've been hearing from principals customers, you know, small business customers. Yeah. What we're hearing is those that have received funds are much more optimistic than those that have not. And, and I think that makes sense. If, if you look at the journey of when this all started, there was sort of that, hey, this is temporary. We'll get through this in a couple of weeks and we'll, we'll be right back to operating full speed ahead. And then it drug on. And, and, and that sentiment changed a little bit to, wow, I'm not sure we're going to get through this or I don't know what's going to happen or there's that uncertainty and that that brings some fear and some doubt into, into the, the business owners. And then this stimulus came and, and that, you know, that buoyed their spirits a little bit. And then there was some apprehension about, well, how do I get it? How do I apply for it? How do I figure out how to do all that? And, and, and those that, that applied and received their funds, you know, they've got this, this great outlook now. They're, they think they're going to make it through, but they have a, a new set of concerns. How do I spend this money? How do I make sure that I spend it in a way that, that if I want it to be forgiven, it is. How do I make sure that I don't take two programs that might cancel each other out or make it so that I can't get the loan forgiven? And, and so that's from the people that, that have received funds. You know, they think now they're gonna make it through. And then the, yeah. those that haven't are even you know, more in despair saying, wow, this has been going on for so long. I'm not sure we're gonna make it. I maybe have a week left. And, and you know, that's really disheartening to hear because these people that start these business, oftentimes they're not in it. They don't go say, hey, I'm, I need to start a business to make a lot of money. They start a business because they're passionate about whatever, they, whatever field that is, and it turns into a business that is successful. And so now it's their passion, something they built, something they loved, and they're looking going, I don't know if this is going to survive. And that's disheartening and, uh, to, to hear from, from businesses and business owners. Yeah, it's so um, weird. I, I mean, you and I were talking bef before we started recording about what a strange time we're in, and there's so much that's unknown for everyone, right? So, so the government's trying to help, but they don't necessarily understand the needs of small business, and the needs are different. Uh, sometimes they're different by industry. Sometimes they're just different, you know, one small business to the next. Uh, so so it, it's sort of um, a, a bit of a crapshoot. I thought it was interesting when you said that the ones who have been getting the aid and, and have been, you know, applying for it, you know, then some of their concerns are, 
how do I navigate this? It hasn't been terribly clear. And there have been questions about the whole forgiveness part of it. What does that really mean? How do you really um, go about making sure that you're following whatever the rules are? Right. And, and if you've ever tried to read through um, government websites or regulations or tax code, <laughs> you know how difficult that is to make sure you're doing it right. I think, I think that they have done some really good things, you know, in, in stipulating a good faith that, hey, if you've been impacted by COVID-19, the coronavirus, you know, you're eligible. Um, but, but it is hard to wade through. And I'll tell you, Diane, um, the company principal has done a great job of putting things out there to identify just what expenses can be covered by, for example, the payroll protection program. And if you get that, what should you avoid doing in the future and if you got that, what might you also be able to take advantage of? So, so they've laid it out in a really clear manner, um, you know, just very clear. You can use the paytech protection for this. And if you want it to be forgiven, you've got to do that. And, and it's really, really clear and easy to understand because you're right. It is difficult and, and people are worried about it, right? Some businesses yeah. don't want to borrow money and suddenly they're getting money and the they're scared that, wow, if I don't do everything exactly right to the penny, I am going to have to pay this whole thing back. And, and so there is a significant, significant concern about that. And then the other thing, you know, I've, I've talked to a few business owners. I've got some friends that, you know, own insurance agencies to car dealerships. They worry about providing a safe environment for their employees, yeah. for, for, for their customers. You know, we talked about how different governors are handling this and making decisions. Suddenly, these business owners are put in a spot where they've got to make decisions about the safety of their employees and their customers. And that's weighing on them as well and, and causing them to rethink how they open, to rethink how they treat people, to re, uh, not tr but, but how they handle their clients. Mm -hmm. It's just a lot for them to deal with that they're not used to dealing with. And then the weight of using the money correctly, you know, that, that's just even more for them. Well, and it's a tricky thing. Um, like here in Ohio, they, they opened up restaurants, I think, to like 40% capacity. The restaurants can't necessarily survive at 40% capacity. You know, it depends on their cost structure and what it takes to actually operate that restaurant for the, you know, period of time that it's open. So, you know, while it's a great idea to, to say, wow, okay, we're opening and they would love to be open, there's a lot that goes into being able to do that, as you said, to be, be you know, able to keep people safe. And can they actually survive the ramp up to 100% if 100% ever actually happens. Right. No, you're, you're spot on, Diane. And, and it's, it's not a clear path forward. And like you said, Ohio's got one method. Iowa might have another. Florida might be something different. California, a fourth option. And so every business owner is dealing with something slightly different. You know, what, what I have heard from some is that they've made phone calls to to similar type businesses in a different state and said, hey, what have you done? What are you doing, oh. right? There's no competition there, so they're willing to share. And actually you find with a lot of small business owners, they get a lot of their information from their peers. They've got a trusted network of people they talk to and, and they feel comfortable asking some of those questions. So, you know, they're trying to figure it out. They're trying to use every resource at their disposal uh, to figure out what's best for them. And like you said, how do they make ends meet in a different environment than what they've been used to over the last 10, 15, 20, 30 years, however long they've been in business? It's, it's not easy. It's not clear. And that uncertainty, um, you know, that uncertainty is tough. Yeah. Yeah, it, it really is. And I've been feeling like, because the other thing that I, that I have been hearing from small business owners is, when they implemented the, um, you know, the unemployment plus 600 thing, which is great because yep. it, it helped the employees be, you know, calm and relaxed, but that was great. And, and I look at it and I say, boy, you know, they took action. They just stemmed the, the tide. They, they got us to a place. But now these business owners are saying, okay, but like my staff doesn't want to come back because until we're going <laughs> yeah. to pull both, First of all, some of them are making more on unemployment than they were. And for others of them, like servers and restaurants, until they're back full steam, they're going to get hurt financially by 
going back to work. So I feel like now that things, we've been in this for a while, there might be value in sort of calming down and saying, okay, so now what do we need for this next phase? Like it can't look the same as the, the solution at the beginning because we're not in that place right now. You're spot on. You are you are exactly right with with those comments, Diane. In that it something needed to be done because the unemployment was spiking so fast, and we saw it. You know, in our, our group contracts, we saw member counts going down, meaning people were leaving the workforce. And you're right, government again reacted quickly and said, "Okay, we're going to up that uh, unemployment by 600." And yeah, that that's great. It it helps in the short term. But then when you start looking, just like you said, suddenly that person might be making more unemployed than they were employed. And, and where's, the, where's the impetus to go back into the workforce then? And so maybe it's a, a slowly repealing some of these or changing the structure yeah. a little bit to try to encourage people to get back into the workforce um, and, and you know, allow that business to be put on a trajectory or a glide path to, to full opening again at some point. But you're right, it, it's hard stuff that the government's trying to do their best, the business owners are trying to do their best. Everybody's trying to work towards back to where we were. And one of the questions we need to ask is, back to where we were, are we ever going to get exactly there or is everything going to look differently? Right. And, right. and I've heard of, for example, some, some restaurants started a, you know, a Saturday night program. You place an order, you pick it up Saturday night, and it's, it's one menu item, and maybe that's something that continues into the future. If they can't run oh, full capacity, they, right, they have, they have some other angle to, to replace some lost revenue and employ some people differently. So, so you do see some businesses looking at it and saying, okay, maybe my business never goes back to normal. What have I done in this time that I can continue to do to drive some revenue, to drive some growth? Right, exactly. Right. What, like what opportunities have come up? What, what changes and innovations have we made? And yeah, boy, uh, that I, I totally um, am on board with. I, it, I was talking to somebody the other day and we were talking about all of this and I said, you know, w when this happened, it was the flip of a switch, right? The lights went out. But coming out of it is going to be more like a dimmer switch. It's not going to be this, boom, we're back, right? It's going to be right. this gradual turning on the lights. And so the decisions that we make and the policies and the programs and the assistance or whatever it is really has to match that. You know, business owners have to think about it that way because that's the truth of what's going to happen. Yeah, you're exactly right. And, and the benefits that have been put in place for these businesses are meant to cover shorter time periods, right? Like, right. like eight weeks. And so good, it gets them through eight weeks. But what about the next eight weeks? Yep. Right? What about the eight weeks after that? Because you're right, right we, we, we dove into this, but we're not springing back out of it. We're, we're gradually climbing out of it. And, you know, the, the, um, the relief programs have been put in place for temporary relief but how do we make sure that we structure them to help people climb out of it? So yeah, that, that's right. a great point. And, you know, again, when you think about a business owner, when you talk to them, they are looking in the short term largely as well saying, okay, how do I get through this period? And then what's next? Because they yeah. get through this period, they come up for a breath and they're going to get pulled back down as, okay, now I've got to figure out, I don't snap back to where I was. What's going to be different looking forward? Yeah. What does it look like? And no one really knows. I mean, that, that's part of the, 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 there's no crystal ball on that. Right. And, and, you know, uncertainty can bring fear. Uncertainty yep. brings doubt. And that's understandable. And, and everybody gets it. And, you know, like I said before, a lot of these businesses, their passion isn't running a business. Their passion is the law or their passion is food or their passion, whatever it is. Yeah. That's what their passion is. That's what they love doing. This other stuff, not nuisance isn't the right word, but it's not where they'd like to spend their time, energy, and effort. Right. They'll do it because it's part of being able to do the thing they love. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right. So, so now I'm going to switch you over to um, what I'm going to call an icky topic, which is <laughs> tax credits and payroll tax deferrals. Because I hear this stuff and, and, I, and then I just feel like I, I'm hearing bees buzzing. Um, so can you help us 
uh, understand what do we need to know about these provisions as, as we motor through this situation. Right. There's a few things I'd say that you need to keep in mind in that some of these programs can be used with others and some of them cannot. And, and so keeping clear what path you want to go down is extremely important. And I mentioned uh, principal.com has a lot of resources. One of them they have is a, a Q&A or a decision tree that allows you to work through it to say, what relief package is right for me? Is it a loan? Is it a paytech protection program that is maybe forgivable? Is it a grant or is it one of these um, tax credits or benefits or payroll tax? What is it? And so there are resources out there to help you because as we talk about it, it probably will sound clear, but in a day you're like, oh, what was that again? And, and, and I get that, right? Because you spend time in it, you start to know it. But if you just want to know very quickly, um, what is this? What is that? Yeah, it's easy to understand. But when you get into it and say, all right, now I'm going to start asking for money or I'm going to start doing something, there's a lot more trepidation. So there's really um, maybe two or three key programs. The first is just the delay of the em employer payroll tax. And that's really, as it says, it's just delaying that tax. And so you can delay it out to December 21 and December of uh, 2022. And, and again, it's not forgiveness of it, yeah. it's delaying it. So, so in a way, it's kind of a loan, right? You're borrowing this money from today to repay into the future. So that's important right. to know. And if you use it, um, you've got to, it, it will jeopardize the forgiveness status of the pay Paycheck Protection Program. So you want to use it before you get that um, Paycheck Protection Program loan forgiven. Another option, minute. what's that? Wait a minute. Okay. So. Oh, yep, go ahead. So if I, if I get the payroll protection uh, program for my people. Yep. And I don't pay the tax, the payroll tax on it right now, I can still get that thing Forgiven? Yes. If you, yes. If you, if you um, request the forgiveness after you've deferred the payroll tax. Okay. Right. And this is, this is where it gets so confusing that again, yeah. you sit here and listen and go, oh, that makes sense. And then you start filling it out and you go, okay, what order did I have to do things in? What's yeah. going to happen? And so again, I'll just point you out to, you know, principal.com where this information is laid out in such a clear and easy way to understand. And it takes you through it. Um, you know, I just point people there, it, right when you get there, there's a, um, four businesses you can click on and this information is all out there, but yeah, those are the, the yeah. So, so you just got to make sure wow. you know what you're doing, what order you're doing it and what cancels the other program out. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. For, yeah. For that. Okay. Um, you know, another option they have is, is retention credit, the employee retention credit. You get a credit on your, um, uh, taxes up to $5,000 per employee. Um, and, and there's a few rules about how big you are and which employees count. But again, that, that is a um, credit. That is not a loan that needs to be replayed. Uh, that is a credit um, and generally in a little bit smaller amount. And then you also can get a, a payroll credit if you've paid a family sick leave um, or family sick pay uh, related to COVID. So, so there's also some relief there if you've had some employees or employees, family members that have been affected by this, there are some options as well. Okay. And for that, I, I was curious about that. So in order for that to apply, you, you have to have confirmation that the person had COVID? Um, I don't know if you need to have confirmation of that. Um, it, it will be if, if you paid some former sick leave or family sick leave. Um, and, and I just don't know if there's a yeah. form to fill out or not exactly how that works. I haven't spent a ton of time looking into that one. It, it, it's sort of the, I'm not going to say bottom of the list, but it's one of the smaller ones that, that yeah. is the way it is down there. Yeah. 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 Okay. I, I just, yeah. Like, like yeah. I said, I, I don't know that, in, in their um, expediency, you know, even with like the paycheck protection program, it wasn't clear exactly at first what you had to do to be able to show you were affected by COVID. And now it's, you know, we're finding out you, you have to attest to it 
and the lender has to accept that. And so there's, there's some safe harbor provisions out there for these companies. And, and some of this stuff, it hasn't been made completely clear in their um, haste and, and haste maybe implies thoughtlessness. That's not the case at all, but just yeah. trying to be expedient in getting this, um, getting this relief out there to business owners. Right, right, right. Okay. All right, cool. Thank you for that. Um, and I love this idea of um, on the principal website that the decision tree, because I think those always make it so much easier. You don't have to try and you guys have already gone through the whole madness for everyone. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we've tried. We've got folks that, um, you know, th there, there are people that really like reading through this and understanding it and taking it apart. Not only a decision tree, we've got a calculator out there to help you figure out how much of a, a PPP paycheck protection program loan you should apply for. Um, so, and then we've got an expense tracker out there on the back end. And so there's a lot of resources out there to really help business owners through this time and take away some of the uncertainty and, and the lack of maybe transparency and clarity that, that come from these, some of these programs. Yeah, that's great. Cause boy, I mean, this whole uncertainty thing is, is probably one of the biggest issues I, right here. You saw here. Small business owners say, okay, I, I, I can, I can, I'm pretty nimble. I'm pretty resourceful. If I understand what's going on, if I have an idea of what it is I have to do, it's when I don't that I can't sleep at night. So. Right. Right. You're exactly right. Yeah. I'm going to take a quick sponsor break and I have some more questions for you. All righty. Accelerate Your Business Growth Podcast is happy to be sponsored by audible.com. And while audible.com has literally thousands of titles of audiobooks that you can choose from, they have so much more. Uh, they have podcasts, they have audible originals, they've got news, they've got guided meditations. Uh, I can tell you right now, um, the guided meditations are feeling pretty good <laughs> right about now to get someone, you know, bring the temperature down and the vibration down. Uh, so, um, I think you will find a lot more there than uh, you had imagined. So if you're thinking to yourself, okay, I like to read books, great, rock on, go ahead, but check it out anyway, because there's other things I think you'll find value in. And to help you do that, we are offering a free trial. Go to audibletrial.com slash business growth and explore for yourself. Today we're speaking with Nate Skelhaas about how small businesses can navigate the COVID crisis and begin to rebuild. Okay, now, um, I, I'm going to ask you a, a question about another thing that makes my head spin, and that <laughs> is uh, the single employer pension plans and uh, the delay on this. Um, I'm wondering if you can just shed some light on it, why it's important, what small business owners need to know about it. Yeah, you know, th this, is, this is again, one of those things similar to the, the payroll deferral is that you're, you're allowed, or payroll tax deferral, you're allowed to delay the, the um, contributions without penalty. And, and that's a little different than normal. And that can be delayed all the way to January 1st of 2021. So again, it's designed to get you through this difficult short-term time um, and, and isn't a, a long-term solution, but it, but it is, does help in the short term. And again, keep in mind that it's not a forgiveness of it. It's not allowed to, to just completely ignore it. You're pushing it out into the future. And so it's important, again, when you think about the things that you can take advantage of, you know which ones are, you know, I'll say free and which right. ones are, uh, pushing, pushing it down the road that you're going to have to have those funds then uh, January 1, 2021. So, so again, I just say, keep in mind anything you're looking at doing, no, is it, is it going to be forgiven? Is it a grant? Is it a loan? What are the, what are the, uh, what are the terms of that loan? And then is it something I'm just going to have to repay in the future that will help you make decisions on how you take advantage of some of these? Got it. So it feels to me like um, the, this stimulus, these, these different provisions were really designed to provide, you know, where they could to provide small business owners with opportunities to not have to spend money that, that they're not bringing in right now. Um, 
and, but but they will later once things come back and you know th things are a little more normal and they have the ability to actually make revenue then they will have the money to, to be able to participate again and then the other provisions are um, just to keep that to keep the community everybody the employees and the businesses um, uh, set I guess it, it might not be a great word but for now so that home and and you know not able to pay their bills and and whatnot right and and if you think about the way this unfolded and right we have the benefit of hindsight now we didn't really know what was going to happen we didn't know yeah. how long it was going to be and so a lot of a number of these programs were put in place as a stopgap to get us through six weeks to get us through eight weeks and now we're getting close to that eight weeks and going okay what's next where yeah. are we going next? And, and some of these things say, okay, right, there's the uncertainty in the eight weeks. As you said, we can push that down the road when hopefully we will be back to making money, generating more revenue. But again, we don't know what, as we talked about earlier, what that new normal looks like. And, and so right. there's still, still uncertainty, still doubt. And yeah, the programs helped us out in the short term. What are we gonna do looking to the future? Okay, so speaking of the future. Yeah, my crystal ball. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly, would you please. Um, are there things that you can see that you think small business owners should be preparing for or changes that they maybe should be starting to implement so that they are um, like not experiencing like a boomerang effect? once things are you know in a better place yeah i think one of them i touched on a little bit earlier what have you done during this period if you were doing something differently if you came up with a new program if you came up with a new way to serve your clients is that something sustainable is that another or a different source of revenue for you so so that's maybe one two is you know, as you read and you hear about the, the reserves or the cash that, that small businesses keep on hand, um, you know, it's not, doesn't cover a significant time period and won't get them through um, a significant time period. And so building up that cash as you can for the, the quote unquote rainy day or rainy month, I, I think that is extremely important. And I think um, thinking about not only what does back to normal look like, but thinking today, as we open up, what happens if there is a second wave? What happens if something happens? Um, what would I do then, right? If, I had, if there's a second wave of coronavirus in the fall and you hear people saying there may be, and we go back into this environment, what can I do differently? What, what has worked? What have I seen others do that I haven't had time to implement? What infrastructure changes do I need to make? So, so a lot of it is, again, thinking towards the future and playing out a couple scenarios. What if the ramp up slow? What if it's quick? What if it you know, ramps up and then takes a step back? How do I look and what do I do? Um, is there a way I can build up some cash reserves to get me through some of these times? You know, some, some of the sad things, Diane, that you read and that you hear, people taking out home equity loans to be able to pay their employees. I mean, so many of these businesses operate as families um, yeah. and, and, and the owner, again, they're, yeah, they want to make money, but their reason for being in the business isn't the making money. That's not what's pushing them. It's their passion for whatever they're doing. And they have surrounded themselves oftentimes with people that share that passion. And so they have that kindred spirit and that family feeling. And you see people personally taking out a loan to try to help their employees through, um, yeah, it's just, it, it, it's, it's encouraging on, on the one hand and, and sad on the other um, that we're going through this. And so thinking through what are the, the scenarios in the future that I have to um, be prepared for? Yeah, you know, um, when you said that thing about, you know, taking out these home equity loans and the weird thing about all of this, and I'm wondering if something will come of this, so I guess I'm, I'm curious about what your thoughts are, that there were companies that had to take out a loan 
to continue to pay their payroll while they were waiting to get their PPP funds, but they can't use the PPP funds to pay back the loan. So do you, do you think like any of that might change? Like the, the regulations might say, okay, if you can show that that's what you use the loan for, that you can use the PPP funds for that and still get forgiveness? Um, so, so if there's one thing I've learned, predicting what's coming out of Washington is nearly impossible. <laughs> I mean, you can Good read point. something on day one that they're all set to vote on. You wake up the next day and you're like, well, that wasn't in there. And that's yeah. true. So, so I don't know. If you ask my opinion, um, I think it should. Yeah. I, I mean, that, that's what, I mean, again, that's the intent of what the PPP is, what people have done to keep their people employed and to, to give them paychecks. So it seems like they're operating in the, in the same way that um, that is what, what, what's intended to happen and what should happen. But if, if it is or not, you know, yeah. your guess is there is as good as mine, Diane. I just, yeah. I don't know. Well, it, it's hard to know yeah. <laughs> for the exact reason that, that yeah. you said, right? Yep. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. Okay. So Given that, and, and given that there is so much unknown, and, and, and given that small business owners are really looking for answers and resources and, and whatnot, can you talk some about the resources that are available and what Principal is doing? Um, you, you mentioned, you know, the decision tree thing and the resources that you have on, on the website. Are there other things that you are doing to support small businesses through this? Yeah. Yeah, yes, there, there are, um, you know, our, our um, principal of the foundation has started this giving chain program, which is really encouraging people to buy local, help out the small businesses, and then donate that to somebody that really needs it. Because there are a number of folks, and you know, even some smaller businesses are really thriving if they were in the right, in the right industry. Um, and, and some of the bigger companies like principal have continued to employ people have um, you know, done, done some, you know, just take a pause and everything and let's see what happens. Um, and, and so they've, they've encouraged some of this, you know, we've given, uh, um, help some dental offices by offering a, a dental credit towards, uh, the personal protection equipment. And, and so we're, we're trying to do some things to help some of these businesses. Um, you know, I mentioned the decision tree, you know, there's a nice chart out there that just compares all of the relief options list what they are, who's, who they're um, offered to, kind of the deadline, what limits they might have. Can you use it with other programs? Which one can you not? Um, you know, th there's just a, a short article out there, 12 cash flow ideas to help businesses get just through 2020. Um, seven ways small businesses can maximize their PPP loan forgiveness. So when you start thinking about forgiveness, what expenses can you use the PPP loan for? And what can't you? What percentage has to go to payroll? what doesn't. Um, like I, I mentioned, there's a, a PPP loan amount calculator, a forgiveness calculator, a tracking spreadsheet. Um, there is just a wealth of resources. You know, Principal itself has partnered with some, some startups um, in, the, in the underwriting space, some smaller companies that may be small, you know, entrepreneurs, business owners that have, a, have, have a, sometimes a wild idea and, and we've been able to partner with some of them to help, you know, bring them some revenue. So, so we've done a lot and we've put a lot of resources out there um, for, for smaller businesses to look through. And again, it is super easy to read through, super easy to track, um, really a great source. And again, that's principal.com. Um, and, and it's so easy to get to. I just can't stress enough when you, when you don't know where to turn, going and trying to read through government, um, legal documents. It's just hard. Yeah. And, and so what we use is we use normal words, words that people <laughs> understand um, to, to um, really work through it. You know, we, we've also done some things, Diane, to, for, for personal um, insurance, as well as um, group plans. Um, we've extended grace periods. So if you can't make your premium on time, normally in the life insurance world, you get 30 days to make that premium payment. We've extended that to 90 days. 
and, and just to allow people a little more leeway to manage their cash. Um, we've allowed um, some group benefits coverage to temporary halt. You know, we've halted rate increases um, you know, for, for the business that was renewing. So, so we've tried to do some things to help businesses just navigate this as well as to help them as they're reviewing their financial impact. You know, this takes a little bit off their plate and one less thing they have to worry about um, in, immediately. We've also done some things on the retirement side. Um, no, you know, we've waived some of the fees if a participant wants to take a distribution um, that's tax qualified. So, so we've done a number of different things to try to limit the impact to people and help them um, maintain their coverage, get their money, whatever it is, in the best way possible. Yeah, it sounds like it. That that is so great. I mean, that that is a lot of stuff. That depending on the industry, as you said, there are industries that are that are doing well in this because right. they're necessary, and um, and then there are the others. And so, boy, I think just having a place that people can go where they can get information, and if they're not seeing it, can ask the questions, really is so incredibly valuable. Uh, you know, in, in this time. Um, so I, I appreciate it. And I appreciate you spending time with me to talk about all of this uh, stuff um, because, boy, it, it's, it's ever-changing, as we know. Like, you and I are having this conversation, and who knows, tomorrow th things could <laughs> totally change. Um, but we can only deal with the here and now and what we know in this moment, right? Right. Them. Right. And, and, and Diane, that may, maybe one, one more comment is, sure. you know, I was working at principal in 2007, 2008, 2009, sort of the great mm -hmm. financial crisis. And this feels different. This feels like more as a state, country, world, whatever you want to say, we're in this together and we're trying to find our way through it and we're trying to help each other out and we're trying to do what's right for, for ourselves, for our clients, for our customers, for people. And it, it, it feels just different than that did. And it, it honest, quite honestly feels better. Yeah, it, it's so interesting. It's, it's like, okay, we're all in this together and it's not that any of us did anything wrong, right? It, right. We just, we had this happen to us. So let's all band together and figure out how we can get through it. Yep. Yeah. And it seems like, yeah. you know, all companies are looking at how they treat their clients and customers and what yeah. they can do from auto insurance, giving you, you know, kind of a rebate because you're not on the road nearly as much. Yeah. Um, you know, so, so there's, there's a lot of that type of stuff going on. And so it just feels different than it did in 2007, 2000. Yeah. I, I totally agree with you. I, I totally agree. I guess my, um, my wish is that we hang on to the good. You know, once we're out of it, that we continue, that we, really embrace the importance of the relationships and the importance of taking care of others that that you get fed so to speak the more you do that um so that we so that something good comes out of yep. all of this right yep i i could not agree with you more on that sentiment well i so appreciate you spending time with me and sharing this information i feel like not only um, that I have a better understanding, but also that I know I have someplace I can go when I wake up tomorrow. And don't remember. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's for sure. And we are constantly updating that information as we learn and digest what, whatever yeah. is released. Yeah, which is also, thank you so much for saying that, because I was going to say, it's the kind of place where you want to bookmark it because you want to go back. Yeah. You guys are doing the updating. So instead of going out there and trying to find the new information, just, you know, give it a day and then come see you, you, you know, principal. And, right. Um, you'll be able to get that information. So thank you for what you are doing for. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you for, community. thank you for having me. I, I really, really enjoyed it. Really appreciate it. And really appreciate what you're doing to help, um, help some of those business owners and smaller businesses as well. It's, it's great and keep it up. We're working on it. Thank you. <laughs> Great. You know, all together. Uh, and listeners, you're who we're talking about and you're who we're caring about. So um, hopefully this was valuable for you. I know it was valuable for me, so I'll make an assumption. Uh, and I'd like to thank our sponsor. They also help make this possible. Um, Audible.com. Get your free trial of Audible.com by going to audibletrial.com slash business growth.
as always, uh, continue to prosper and be curious. And until we meet again on another episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, goodbye and good day. I asked my doctor to write a note saying I suffer from cabin fever so I could write off my summer vacation as a medical expense. She said no. Fortunately, Red Roof's clean, comfortable rooms are very affordable and you wake up rested and ready to hit the road again. And get this, when you rest and repeat at Red Roof this summer, staying two separate times can earn you a free night. Cure your cabin fever at redroof.com. Me, 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 but also you. <laughs> the Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film, Powder Donut. <clears throat> Okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. Oh man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous Walrus, the Bulbous Walrus. The Name Your Price tool, only from Progressive. The owl ran afoul of the comatose Coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates Price and Coverage Match Limited by State Law. Imagine how fast we could solve the world's biggest problems if more SaaS startups would gain traction sooner. Welcome to the Tech Entrepreneur on a Mission podcast. This podcast is dedicated to sharing experiences from B2B SaaS CEOs who are going above and beyond to deliver change that is noticed. You will hear their secrets and learn what is required to build a SaaS business that the world starts talking about and keeps talking about and how to overcome the roadblocks to do so.